So let's move on. I'm going to read now through half of Galatians. We'll stop, and then we'll read the last half, and then we're going to conclude. Okay. So in here, it's about accepting the covenant of Hagar. This is a subject that almost nobody talks about. Mm -hmm. I don't think too many people really probably quite understand it. Um, and there's a lot to it. I'll, I'll get into some of it, uh, but we're going to read the scripture. Uh, but it's for me, it's more about a concept because this is really a discussion all by itself. But we're just going to go through this and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So in verse one, now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, as an infinite and immature, does not differ or is more excellent at all from a slave. Though he is master, that has the supreme authority of all. But is under beneath guardians of the full power of domestic manager and stewards as an overseer until the time appointed as a, a designated day by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, as an infant and immature, were in the past in bondage as a servant under an inferior position of the elements that is an orderly arrangement like the military rank when they walk of the world. So in other words, you're conforming to the world standards. Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. That's what it's getting across. As an orderly arrangement. And there is an order to it. But when the fullness of the time had come, Yahweh sent on a mission forth his son, born of a woman, born to come into being under, beneath in obedience to the law of Moses. So even Yahshua was under the law. Mm-hmm. Born in what they call the New Born Testament. Born into being under the law. To redeem for an improved opportunity those Jews who are under the law that we might receive in full the adoption as sons. And because you are presently sons, Yahweh has sent forth the spirit of his son into by entering your hearts through your mind and feelings. Here, that's what we've been talking about. Where's the filter up here? Do you have one? Yes, mm -hmm. you do question is what kind of filter you got is it dirty does it need to be changed yes it probably does through your minds and feelings crying out abba father therefore you are no longer a slave in subserviency to the philosophies of men you've been set free which is what we're telling you but a son and if a son then an heir of yahweh through messiah but then indeed you did not know yahweh you served as a slave those by which nature are not Elohims. But now after you have known through understanding Yahweh, or rather are known by Yahweh, how is it that you have you turn by reverting back again to the weak that is impotent and without strength, the beggarly poor person from stress elements, principles to which you desire as a preference again to be in bondage as a slave of service? You observe by watching days and months and seasons and years. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid with alarming reverence for you, lest I have labored to the point of fatigue for you in vain that leads to failure. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured through unjustness uh, to me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. And my tri tri trial of adversity, which was in my flesh, did not despise or reject or despise, but you deceive, you received me as an angel of Yahweh, even as Messiah Yahshua. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I fear you witnessed that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. So we'll stop, pause right there and elaborate a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's just a, it's just a continuation of this letter. Right. You know, expounding on the same thing. He's just coming at it from different different perspectives to try to reach them. You know, it's like we sitting here and we talking. And we're saying, Oh, he just spoke to me again. Here's another analogy. Here's another way I see I see it. You know, um there's no other name besides the name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And there's no other way. He is the way, the truth and the light. And yet, we as humans, we always think it's something more that we can put on to to do. And and to their fault out there, they they have the right uh, perspective. But to their fault, they they uh, deliver it to me in in a, in a uh, 
weakening manner. You know, when they say, oh, there's nothing else you need to do. He did it all. Oh, you need to believe, you know, that he did it all. But you also need to believe that you still have to condemn you in a, in a certain manner of life. You know, if, if I taught you, Paul is saying, if I taught you this way, you know, well, then who's teaching you this way? Mm -hmm. Where did you get this from? Because I didn't teach you that and you wasn't like this when I left. I've so experienced a lot of that one. Why, yeah. why am I finding a different person now? You know, and, and with these Galatians, it's like so many other people. And we all can say we read the scriptures. Do we understand really that all of us are subject to the same things? Somebody else coming in and teaching you a better way. Uh, how many people you know to this day? I found out that we don't have to keep the Sabbath no more. Oh, well, where hmm. did you go at to get that? Hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> where? Yeah. Who did you go to? Right. Because you definitely didn't go to the word. You with me? Mm -hmm. and, and Moses never talked against keeping the commandments. No. And he never talked against uh, receiving Yeshua. He was telling you one going to come after me. Him, I want you to hear in all things. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you a piece of it right now. Right. But he's going to bring all of it together and you hear him in everything. He's not going to take this part away. He's right. going to put it all together. That's that's where I'm at. So yeah, far. no, no, I got you. You know, this particular verse here, this last one is interesting because mm -hmm. there seems to be a shift in his language. He says, what then was the blessing you enjoyed? Mm hmm. So what he's signifying here to me is that when they were walking the way they should have, they enjoyed a blessing. Mm -hmm. For I bear you witness that if possible, you would have, you would have, mm -hmm. not presently, but you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Mm -hmm. Whatever he would have asked them to do. But they're now did. currently in a state where he's saying that has changed. Your attitude towards me has changed. And, I'm, and, and as we read earlier up, he was saying, I want you to bear with me for a while in my folly. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to ridicule you mm -hmm. and, and humor you with the ridicule. But you need to be told. And that's kind of what we're doing here for those that need to wake up. Is that sometimes we ridicule, sometimes we criticize, but it's not for condemnation. Uh, I'm sure. But you just got to wake up. You got to understand what's really going on here. This is like a matrix world that we're living in. I'm sure you have people now, you you know, uh, uh, well, probably not presently with you right now, but we're with you uh, a while. And would come and say, John, I know Yahweh spoke to you because uh, uh, he told me to come here. When I heard your message, he told me to oh. come here and listen to you. And now, boom, they're they gone. gone another way. They yeah. don't want to hear nothing you got to say now. This is the kind of people he came back. Right to me, and and there's going to be some. To somebody there's going to be some people who are watching this, mm -hmm. who are going to hear this, and they're going to be cut to the heart. Mm -hmm. And three minutes after they leave this the, the video that they're watching, they're going to revert back to the old way again. Mm -hmm. If that's just the nature of how it works, so let's move on. Verse sixteen: mm -hmm. I have therefore become your enemy, to be hated. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So now it changed. Yeah. Because I tell you the truth, a proper doctrine, they zealously with warm feelings court you, mm -hmm. but of no good. They don't mean you're no yes, good. Yes, they want to exclude by shutting you out mm -hmm. that you may be zealous with warm feelings for them. Mm -hmm. So they want to get them over on their side, hit their side. But it is good, morally valuable to be zealous and good things always. And not only when I am present with you, mm -hmm. my little children. For whom I labor and felt the pains and birth again until Messiah is formed as adjusting your inward parts in you. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is. It's a progression. We're progressing along the way until he is fully formed in you. Mm -hmm. Until then, the shadow pictures are still there. Mm -hmm. Because once he's fully formed in you, you ain't got a shadow no more. Mm -hmm. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone. For I have doubts that there is no way out for and about you. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you who desire rather to be under beneath the law of Moses with Talmud mixed with it, 
Do you not hear with understanding the law of Moses? So he's got a con he's got a, a, a converse here going on. Mm -hmm. And that is on one hand, you want to hear the law of Moses mixed with Talmud, which is what this subject is about. Mm -hmm. And he's saying inside of that, don't you hear what Moses is saying? In other words, don't you know how to discard the Talmudic part and listen to what Moses is saying? Mm -hmm. And But Moses is clouded because of the Talmud mixed in it. Mm -hmm. It's that hijacked car again. Mm -hmm. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman who is unrestrained to go at pleasure. But he who was of the bondwoman which is a female slave, was born according pertaining to touch, touching, to the flesh. And he of the free, free woman, whose promise is divine assurance. Which things are symbolic in the opposite sense. Mm -hmm. So we got a contrast going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, two opposing ideas. For these, for these are two covenants or contracts. The one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage of ceremonial slavery, which is Hagar, the concubine of Abraham, not the Abrahamic covenant. She was not the legitimate wife. Right. And she produced a seed that didn't get the birthright, mm -hmm. didn't get the blessings that Israel was going to get and mm -hmm. was designed to get. Mm -hmm. That's when that seed got crushed. Mm -hmm. See, you could say in a moment when Abraham... Uh, came into her and conceived the son in a certain sense, his testicles got crushed in that moment mm -hmm. because he got a substitute son, which was not the one of the promise. Mm -hmm. So that son could not produce what the real son of promise was supposed to produce. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I don't want to say he made a mistake. What I want to say is that seed that came out to produce that child could not do what the, uh, the original one is going to do. Yeah. That's the point. Mm -hmm. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, which was called Ag Agar in their day. So a lot of people don't realize that, but 500 years before Moses ascended to the mountain at Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. that same mountain was called Mount Agar mm -hmm. when Abraham was around. Mm -hmm. And that's when that other covenant was cut at that time. Mm -hmm. It's the same mountain and corresponds and answers to Jerusalem. OK, which now is and is in bondage as a voluntary slave with her children. That's why this revelation series that I did, mm -hmm. I show that Jerusalem is Babylon the Great. And that Sanhedric Judaism is the great whore. Mm -hmm. It started out this way and that's the way it's going to conclude. But the Jerusalem above is free which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, stiff, stiff and unnatural and sterile, you who do not bear, and bring forth seed or travail and pain. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. Speaking of Rachel. Mm -hmm. For the desolate, lonesome is a solitary desolate wilderness, as Hagar was, has many more children than she who has a husband. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise, divine insurance. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman, which is a female slave and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free, unrestrained to go at pleasure. So now we have the closing comments. Mm -hmm. Whatever feedback you want to give on that. Well, praise Yahweh. This was exactly what we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. it, it was. It's deep. It's very deep. It's deep. And maybe for us, we know it's deep, but it seems so like common it, it, you know elementary well when you live this way mm -hmm. with this understanding uh for as long many years as we have and you see the results of those who follow like this 
versus those who get the consequences of following like with Talmud or rabbinics and things, or even Christian, because uh, they're all covenant of Hagar at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. After a while, you just can't deny what you're seeing. All these things leave clues. Evidence leaves clues. And if you consistently see the negative results, then you have to conclude this This is correct. This is truth. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be my point on that. Yes. And just closing with it, as I see my journey, it's just walking by faith. And everything that we've been talking is the promise of Abraham, how he walked by faith. You know, and how he's seen his promises. And it's, it's, if anybody out there just like I was and coming through the journey, not knowing where I was going to end up, but just following this voice and it's believing that that was the voice. Because it, it, every time I open up the word, every time he gave me a vision, he would be showing me and I would be hearing this voice. And it would be exactly where I'm going, but it didn't look like where I was supposed to be. I had one, one, one um, dream when I was in prison. And it was like several rooms. It was a bunch of rooms, you know, maybe about six of them. And each room, people were dressed the same way. They had the, the uh, sea seats. Uh, they had different hats and different locks around their head. And each one of them were dressed alike. But I would make it from one room and I would go to the next. And I'm seeking something, you know. Hmm. What I'm hearing now, it looks like the place I should be. But they're not saying what I've been told, you know. They're not saying what I've been taught. And this is what Paul is teaching here, you know, in Galatians. Who given you this? I didn't teach this. I didn't teach this is where this come from. And I got to one room and they were blacks, but they were dressed in the same attire. And mm. I'm like, oh, this got to be the place I'm supposed to be right there because I'm feeling at home. They the same. And mm. all the places I ever been as a sinner now in the churches were all black churches, you know. Well, mm. maybe in the army they was mixed, but most part I hear they were all black, you know? And so, well, this got to be the place. But what they were saying, now this is not the one. And I kept going, I kept going until I made it outside. Hmm. There's no more rooms now. I'm outside and I'm standing around. And I still have not found my place. Who's wandering out there searching for their place? Or is your mind and your heart being crushed? are the testicles of your mind and heart being crushed that you won't stop like Abraham did and wait on the promise. Abraham made many choices, yeah, but yeah. it didn't make the promise of none effect. Right. Yeshua has promised to never leave or forsake us. He's going to bring us to the Father, but mm. we got to wait on him. How many of us are out there still moving and not waiting on the promise? How we how he's gonna find you when he returns? That's that's my closing, and I, I'm I'm just praying that my experience, John' experience, will help you hold on a little while longer and wait and just start start just looking at what's being told to you, putting a screen up. Uh, you know, the word of Yahweh is like like a sifter. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, the, in the old days when I was a little kid, they had a little thing called mm -hmm. a sistrum. Mm -hmm. You know, and you pull that flower in there because it had a lot of trash in it. Mm -hmm. And you had to sift through it so that the trash. This is all we doing right here. If we, we using this word and it's like a sistrum today. We just sifting it out that nothing but the pure word of Yahweh come out right now. Mm -hmm. And that you can gather from it and get all the trash out. Get all the trash out of your the testicles of your mind and your heart right now and let the pure undulterated word of Yahweh penetrate. Amen. Um, hmm. There's a lot I would like to say, but we, I don't want to belabor this too long. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, is that 
people have been hijacked out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. They, I considered myself fortunate in a certain way because when I was first called out of the world on my deathbed and I was miraculously healed, um, I was brought straight into the foundations of the faith the correct way. Mm -hmm. I was brought up a Catholic. I didn't really believe in it. But when I was brought into this faith, I was brought directly right in. And I learned the correct foundation from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I feel really bad. I really do. For those of you out there that have, were brought in in different kind of ways. And you got a lot of scarring going on up there. You got a lot of beliefs that are erroneous up there that you really need to get rid of. You need to come to grips with them. Because they're strongholds. They are spiritual strongholds. I'm not saying you're demonically possessed. What I'm saying is, and there may be some that are, but what I am saying is that you have spiritual strongholds. And one of the strongest strongholds that you can possibly have is erroneous beliefs. And when you examine all these scriptures pretty much that we've been going through here today, Shaul was confronting them about their beliefs how they got to be the way that they were. And like Anthony said, if you don't guard this thing up here and get all that trash out of your testicles of your mind, mm -hmm. that seed's going to be mixed with a lot of other stuff and you're going to get a hybrid. And that hybrid in no way, shape, or form is ever going to be blessed. It's only going to be a curse. I don't know about you guys out there, but for me, I'm getting up in age. I've done a lot of stupid things over the years. I've done a lot of things that I thought was the right way, but I knew it wasn't the right way. I thought I was going to go do it and make it happen anyway. I'm tired of going down those roads. Mm -hmm. I want an easier road now. Yes. I want the straight and narrow path. Yes. As it says in Matthew. For broad is the way that leads to destruction, mm -hmm. and there are many that go in by it. But narrow is the path that leads to life. Yes. And there are few that find it. Are you one of the ones that's going to find it? Yes. The only way you're going to do that is get your testicles uncrushed. And with that, we thank you for joining us for Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions. Until we see you next time with another subject, may Yahweh bless you and Yahshua be in your lives working out these issues. So shalom and peace. Amen.